Hey, how are you all doing? It's very tragic, isn't it, about Liam Payne? Now, I wasn't really what you would call a boy band lover. I've always been into guitar rock groups, and I've never really seen the point of a boy band, to be honest with you, because I used to think that they just stand there, learn a few dance moves, and uh, that's it, really. You know, and occasionally... So, Someone comes along who can write a few songs and that adds to the creative ability of the boy band. Some boy bands better than others. And I wasn't really a fan of um, Simon Cowell for taking very vulnerable young teenage boys and thrusting them together to form a super group. I felt as if this was always something that he did for himself, Simon Cowell, and really not for the greater good of uh, England, wanting to uh, find the next NSYNC. I felt as if it was always about Simon. And I think that he should hold and shoulder some responsibility for Liam Payne's death. Yes, he gave out a sympathy, and he's probably very saddened, but I think it should go a lot farther than that. I think that Simon Cowell failed on many times to protect these young personalities that are having to navigate and deal with some very hostile situations at times. Everybody will say, what are we talking about, Martin? They live a life of luxury. Look, happiness and the pursuit of happiness isn't always with success and riches. Now, as you know, I'm not a fan of Simon and I've said so. And there's a reason why I'm not a fan of Simon Cowell and that's because when he worked for Stock Aiken and Waterman um, as a runner and, you know, when he was learning his trade, he, he was one of these crafty people that would always look over someone's shoulder uh, when ideas were being expounded. I'm talking about Pete Waterman who's, and the rest of them, when they were the brains of the operation and they were putting together all these different various artists. It would be Simon Cowell that would be looking over. I should imagine Pete Waterman on some stage was forever having to cover up his notes in case Simon Cowell was there to, uh, to pinch his best ideas, which I think he did. Because if you cast your mind back to when Pop Stars, the UK talent competition, was airing, this was before X Factor, a long time before it. And Pete Waterman was one of the uh, the judges on Pop Stars, along with Nicky, um, another quite good judge. And this was before Simon Cowell uh, really put any kind of stamp on that. Um, particular television type entertainment uh, program. So you could say that Simon Cowell owes quite a lot to Pete, to Pete Waterman. Probably wouldn't have been as successful as he is if it wasn't for Pete Waterman. And yet he gets shoved right to the back of the queue now, doesn't he? Because everybody thinks that um, Simon's coming up with these original ideas. But they're not, are they? These were not original Simon Cowell ideas. These were by, as I said, Pete Waterman. But he was the true brains of pop stars. And uh, Simon just came along and thought, hmm, I think I'll rebrand that and put my moniker on it. And now everybody thinks that Simon Cowell is an original mogul of all the entertainment uh, and reality shows, which we know he isn't. But he has to shoulder a lot of responsibility for, it was his baby, if you like, it was his idea to get these young personalities and put them all together to form this super group and thus show for them and limousine them around to different um, interviews and to promote them. But then he failed to even protect them. 
he should really have turned around and said that um, I feel partly responsible for what's happening to Liam since for him spiralling and not being able to find any happiness. But he won't. And he will continue to find the next young person to exploit or the next One Direction out there and put them together and it will just go round and round and round because Simon is just interested in the money and not the aftercare. See ya.